Hello, my name is Pam Bartha, and I'm really happy to spend this time with you talking about how to stay on track for the holidays. If we haven't met yet, my name is Pam Bartha, and I am the author of Become a Wellness Champion and the founder of Live Disease Free. We are less than four weeks away from the holidays. This is one of my most favorite times of the year, but it can be really stressful and it can be very tiring. And for those of us that suffer with chronic disease, we can feel really lousy and some of us could have setbacks and we don't want that. So if we haven't met yet, I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis 29 years ago and I'm happy to share with you that I've been able to stay MS free for the past 29 years by treating the root cause. And I teach that to my students. And I just wanna say a little hello, make sure you guys can hear me. Hello, Deanna, hello, Wanda, hello, Roberta, Allison, you guys can hear me, I'm assuming, or else I would have heard otherwise. So I'm just gonna carry on. So thank you so much for spending this time with me. As I mentioned, this is one of the most special times of the year for me, and I know for many of you, it is, um, you know, some of us have a very strong faith background, so there's that aspect to it, but it's also a time to spend with our family and friends, people that we haven't seen all year long, or we've seen them not very often, and our biggest desire for myself is really to wind down and just connect with people and just love on them and just enjoy them. And right now we've got grandkids too, so that's an extra special for this time of year. So it is really important to think about this before we get into the last couple of weeks before Christmas. And I know when I was younger, I used to wing it just, you know, like the week before Christmas, you're out shopping, etc. But as my plate is more and more full with the incredible privilege of coaching hundreds of people all over the world who want to recover from chronic disease, I need to pace myself too. And I'm 57, right? So it's time to, to try to pace a little bit more. And my family is growing and growing, which is awesome. So I'm just going to share a few things with you that I find really helpful myself uh, to mentally and physically prepare for these exciting holidays that are coming. And we all need some downtime with our loved ones, right? And maybe to get outside a little bit more too, as long as it's not too cold where you live. So the first thing, and we're going to be talking about health and a lot of the things that I do, but we have to kind of backtrack for a minute. And I want you to, if you have a piece of paper and a pen, maybe grab it. And please share with me your thoughts as we're talking and please share this video with other people and thumbs up if, if I say something that makes sense to you. So please interact with me because it's a lot more fun right now. I'm just talking to myself. So I'd really like to interact with you. So number one, what is most important to you this holiday season that's coming up for the Christmas season? What is most important to you, right? And that's really important to decide because we're living in a time where there's so many things we can do, so many things we can cook and so many places we can do, go, et cetera. But really what's important to you? For me, it's connecting with my loved ones, with my family, with my friends. And number two, also what kind of traditions are most important to you? Culture. So there are some things that we cannot let go of, that, you know, our faith, et cetera. But there are some things that we have to really kind of look at and say like prioritize let's put it that way put just make a list and what's the most important thing for you as far as customs as far as foods and then also at the bottom of the list you can put things that well if I get to it it would be great so it would be really great if I could bake some cookies for my kids that I don't eat for example but I may not be able to get to that but they want me to be in you know in good shape I've got grandkids coming. I want to have the energy to play with them and to, we're going to have like 30 people over for supper. I'll give you some ideas on how to manage that also. But it's really about my big word is simplify. Try to simplify. And if you're thinking about things ahead of time, it really helps you to simplify. So what are your priorities as far as what do you want to remember? And how do you want to feel during the holidays? Do you want to have energy? Do you want to feel happy? Do you want to feel stressed, right? So do you want to feel happy and peaceful? Do you want to look younger where people say, oh my gosh, you look so good. You look like you're getting younger and younger every year. Or do you want people to go, oh, it's good to see you, you know, and, and you're looking like you're just totally worn out. So if you want to feel well and you want to start the new year running with me, 
right? Running alongside because we have so much to live for. Then we really have to consider and, and not just physically decide what we're going to have in front of us for food, but we also want to mentally think about this. Thank you so much for all the, the hearts, etc. That's awesome. So that is a really big deal. So mentally, I'm already thinking. And next week, I'll be sharing with you lots of healthy ideas for appies and for main dishes for that wonderful holiday season. So you can plan ahead so you can make your grocery list and you can get those foods in the house before they run out. But really, it's about being prepared and simplifying wherever you can. So as far as your budget, like this is part of health too, right? We need to think about what is realistic for me to spend this year. And it's not just the presents and the gifts, but what's realistic for me to spend on food, etc. Because food is super expensive, right? It is like, like for a lot of families, it's bigger than our mortgage payments, right? And nowadays it's, well, in Canada it is, maybe not in the United States and other countries, but it's getting ridiculous how expensive food is. So we have to budget. And what I really love is, for me in my heart is like, I want less and less and less gifts at Christmas. I want to give more and more and more because I am rich. I have everything. I have love. I have this most amazing journey to help people recover. I know all these amazing hero wellness champions. I am rich, right? I've been able to live 29 years without MS and be able to watch my children grow and to be able to enjoy grandkids, to chase after them, a four-year-old and a two-year-old, more to come, I hope, and I'm sure that they will. But it's so wonderful. I have so much to be thankful for. So for me, it's about giving and giving and giving and what, where can I give? Where can I help, right? Also, with respect to this time, we have to make sure that we like pace ourselves, right? And so starting your, with your calendar right now is making in your calendar, like you've already, like start with a list of the things that are most important to you as far as what kind of gifts you're buying for who, set a budget, stick with it, right? Remember, it's about people. It's about love and relationships. It's not about stuff, right? So remember that. What we're doing this year, finally, like our family is getting bigger and bigger, is we're, we're um, picking names. So we are doing get like one gift per person instead of one gift for every single person in our family. And what I'm really hoping to gear towards in time is that I would really love to be just taking the money and giving it to a charitable organization. Because like I said, our families, a lot of us, we are more than rich. So those kind of things are going to give us a lot more uh, joy and a lot more happiness, I know, than a lot of stuff. But we do have to buy little things, right? And we do have to buy little gifts. So this year I started a little bit early. And I had these great aspirations to be done ahead of time because I used to wait like till, you know, the last couple of days before Christmas when I was younger and actually in the last few years, et cetera. But there's nothing really left is picked over and you wander around, you don't know. So don't do that. Create a list. Ask people what they would really like, right? And, and go with that. What I like to do is go at supper time when it's quiet. It's dead quiet in the stores. So go at that time. It's really quiet. You can just zip in and zip out. And I did go last weekend for last Saturday just for a couple of hours. It was in the morning. And I was able to get some amazing little stocking stuffers. So before they're all sold out, just some really cute little stocking stuffers for the granddaughters, etc. So planning ahead, right? And simplifying. Those are big things. And those all affect our health. Because if we are having these expectations that are so huge, and we have to have everything a certain way, and we've got to have all our customs and all our traditions, and then we just can't do it all because of health issues, because of finances, etc. And we get stressed and then we don't start off the holidays in a good way. So those are really important. And as far as like, what I've noticed is that as our family is growing and growing, then we have to understand that different people bring in different customs into our family. So like different types of foods they like. So I'm not hung up on it. Like we like our turkey for sure. But if somebody else has a special dish, and that's what we do for the 30 people that we're going to have in our home, our family, and that's not even our entire family, but we're going to do potluck. And that's another awesome thing. So potluck is great. At the end, everybody pitches in with dishes. So it's not just the person that's you know, hosting that's doing all the dishes. But just 
being very flexible is really important, I find, is that the more I just focus on other people and what makes them happy, it makes me more happy. So I know that those are basic things, but I'm constantly thinking about this all the time. And it just, it, it just makes everything a much greater experience. So as far as the eating plan, like I'm going to be sharing with you specific ideas next week on the main dishes and also appetizers and drinks, etc. So that you can still have a festive holiday, you can have different wonderful recipes, but you don't compromise your health. It's not worth it. So I don't have to speak to you guys about alcohol because I know that, well, the wellness champions for sure, we don't drink alcohol because we're recovering from these infections. It sets us back terribly. It's not worth the wine, et cetera. You know, once you're well for years, once you've treated all those large parasites, the small parasites, the fungus, the different bacterial infections, at that point, you might have a little bit of wine. And what I found is like, it doesn't even taste very good, so I don't drink it anymore. And honestly, the older we get, <laughs> like 57, you know, and I want to be up and awake with my grandkids. So I like feeling well, and I love to be a high achiever, to make a difference in the world. So we pick what's most important to us. So for myself and my husband, we gave up alcohol a long time ago. I'm not against it. It's just, it just, we age less, more slowly, I should say. We're still going to age, but we're going to age more slowly. And we have so much to live for, right? And that's why we do it. So, but during the holidays, for those of you that have chronic disease or disease symptoms, when you're loaded with infection, you have to remember that those microbes, some of them produce massive amounts of alcohol, especially when we're eating the carbs, and we don't need to add any more alcohol for our poor liver to have to metabolize. So the alcohol is really important to avoid. Sugar, obviously, what I would do if I were you, if this is the first time you met me, start to decrease the sugar in your eating plan now. Start to prime yourself up before you get to the holidays. Listen to some of my videos. I've got tons of videos on YouTube and on Facebook, what I eat for breakfast, dinner, and supper. Also, what I eat for snacks, the eating plan. And if you start following that, you're going to start feeling better before you even get to the holidays, you're going to be less tempted to be eating all those foods that make you feel terrible, right? And your taste buds are going to change. And when your taste buds change, it's not a chore. Then you're able to focus on relationships and you're able to focus on just like, I feel great. And I've had 10 people say, you know, like how, like I look young and it, it's nice. It's nice to have a compliment instead of like, oh, you're looking old, you're looking wore out. So all of those things you can start now. And the key, what I want you to start thinking about is thinking about January 1st, right? The new year. How are you going to start the new year? Are you going to start the new year where you are like dog tired? You've got 10 pounds to lose. You've got these symptoms that you never had before. You're depressed. You're dealing with anxiety. No, we don't want to start that way. We don't want to use up our New Year's goal resolutions or our New Year's resolutions for things like that. We want to be taking it up, the like running, starting the new year running. We want to start with okay, what are we going to do? We've got a brand new year. What are the new things we want to bring into our life? I've got all this extra energy. What do I want to do with this year? This is, this may be the last year you have. What are you going to do with it? What difference are you going to make in the world, in your family, with your loved ones, right? So I challenge you to start the new year running. And to start the new year running, we have to go back to right now, and we have to start planning. So that means, as I said, simplifying the whole shopping process, planning what you're going to eat, and that's why I'll give you the different meal ideas next week. And then as we're going into the holidays, what can we do? Number one, sleep is so important. Yes, there was a day when I used to stay up late, and that was probably before kids, right? Because once you start having children, they're up really early for Santa Claus, etc. So that doesn't work very well, because then you just feel wasted the whole day. But honestly, just going to bed on time is so important. When you're carrying these infections and you're having disease symptoms, you really feel it when you're sleep deprived. So just, you know, at 10 o'clock at night or 930, just say, good night, everyone. I'll see you in the morning and just head off into your bed. Read for 10 or 15 minutes to unwind and go to sleep. So that's a really big one. Keep up with your sleep. It's not worth staying up late. It really is not. 
And then, as I mentioned, following the eating plan, making sure you're not going for the high carbs and you're not indulging. The nice thing is with the foods that I share with you, you can kind of pick at the different uh, appetizers over the night and you don't feel sick and you don't feel full and you can just enjoy yourself. And that's a different feeling from many of us, myself included, years ago, you finish the supper, you throw in the dessert on top, and then you just feel sick for hours after. So following the eating plan, going for a walk, taking your family for a walk, depending where you live. If it's 40 below and freezing, no. But whatever activity you can work into your day, or maybe if it's just a nice day pleasant day some of us live where the weather is nice or some of us have this nice winter wonderland where we live it'll be really nice and mild so then what you do is you just throw on some coats and go for a little walk and let the kids play in the snow so activity and sleep and just planning and realistic and just making sure that you have your focus on what's most important to you if you're going to be traveling um, if you have any questions, make sure to type them in, or if you have any comments, things that have been really helpful for you, make sure to put those in. If you're going to be traveling, what I found that's really helpful is if it's a car ride, if it's like a six to eight hour, 10 hour car ride, I will actually pack a nice big fresh salad in one of those glass containers, and I will throw on some grilled chicken or some meat, and I'll have my extra virgin olive oil and some lemon. I just find it tastes so much better. If you can't, that's fine. You can eat on the road. Even places like Boston Pizza, they'll have a little steak and some salmon, and they'll have some salad, and they will have some steamed vegetables. So you can get this type of food anywhere or in a lot of places, but I just like the freshness of what I make at home. So I will often pack that. If I'm traveling by plane, and let's say this is not myself because we're usually at my children's home or family home, but if you're going to a resort, for example, over the holidays, then what I do is as soon as I get into town, and this is for workshops, as soon as I get into town, I the, you know, I'll throw my suitcases in the hotel room and then I will head out, get Uber and go and find a grocery store. And I will pick up a bunch of distilled, not distilled, pardon me, just filtered water. So I'll get a bunch of big jugs of filtered water because it's so much more economical. I will buy some raw nuts, make sure that they look good and healthy, that they're not like really black spots on them or um, rancid. Make sure that they look fresh. But things like pecans or a few almonds, maybe filberts if you find them or sunflower seeds or pumpkin seeds etc so i'll get little bags of those and some fruit a little bit of fruits if the berries look good just a little bit of berries or some green apples uh, so a little bit of fruit a little bit of nuts some water i'm trying to think if there's anything else but just some basic things that i can have oh extra virgin olive oil so when I travel, I don't want to put extra virgin olive oil in my suitcase, but then when I arrive and I get to the store, I'll buy just a little bottle of extra virgin olive oil and I'll keep it in my room and then I can add it to my food so then I at least know, because some places don't have very good quality oils. So I'll have that in my room. Sometimes I'll pick up some veggie platters, just even those small ones that are about that big that can fit in the small fridges. Make sure to check the fridges that they are not freezing because sometimes they're set way too high. You'll wake up in the morning and your, your berries and your veggie platter is frozen. I don't use the dips that come with it because it's usually like a ranch with a ton, a ton of chemicals and dairy and sugar, but I will just eat the veggies. So the veggie platter, some greens, like I've even bought like a tub of arugula, for example, because sometimes for breakfast you can order in some eggs. And then if you have a tub, it's only about this big and maybe that deep and it fits in those fridges. And then you can just put some arugula on your, and I do wash it, I just grab a handful of arugula, turn the tap on, rinse it off, shake it off, put it on my plate with the eggs. Also, you, what I do a lot of times when I'm traveling, so if I'm by myself, I don't really often like to sit in the restaurant by myself for breakfast because I'm getting ready, so then I'll just do room service and just get a couple of eggs, or sometimes they'll have a bunch of vegetables and I'll just say, you know, could you do an omelet, a real omelet with real eggs and just whatever you have in the fridge, whether it's broccoli, asparagus, spinach, you know, green peppers, red peppers, onions. So they'll very often make this really like rich with vegetables omelet for me. And then if you have the greens, another nice green that you can buy just in those little plastic containers is the um, 
baby kale. So it's very tender. You just have to make sure that you check the containers that they're fresh and they're not over, not old. So you can have some greens in your fridge. Um, there is also a probiotic drink that, you know, if you want to treat yourself, and I think it's called Kavita. So most of their drinks have a lot of sugar in them. But this is a probiotic drink and it has cayenne pepper and something else. Gin, I don't know if it's ginger, cayenne pepper and lemon. Maybe cayenne pepper and lemon. lemon. And it's like for the whole bottle, which is at least a cup to two cups, it is uh, one gram of sugar, right? And it's, a, it's like a probiotic drink. So it's kind of like raw sauerkraut. I avoid the other ones, like if you're recovering, there's other great ones that taste good, like there's a mojito one, but again, there's too much sugar in that if you're recovering, but that's a great uh, thing to have for like a little sparkling uh, probiotic drink. I will also pack my own tea. So I find that in a lot of the um, hotels, they will have a little coffee maker and they'll have one or two bags of really low quality tea. And we do know that a lot of the herbal teas, teas in general, there can be a lot of different chemicals if they're not, you know, with a lower grade one. So I buy, I just bring the teas that I like. I bring some peppermint. I love raspberry. There's a great Tega tea, which is a uh, Earl Grey. It tastes exactly like Earl Grey and it's organic Tega, T-E-G-A tea. So I'll bring like, oh, and then Sleepy Time. I love my Sleepy Time tea which is by, I can't remember the name of the company, but it's got a little teddy bear on the front of it. And it just has chamomile and some mint in it, et cetera. And so I will take, I'll take like a couple of Ziploc sandwich bags and I'll put a bunch of tea in that and throw it in my suitcase. So if you're traveling, even when you go to people's homes, a lot of times they don't have a lot of good herb teas. So have some in your purse. I always have in my, in my purse too. So if I end up in a restaurant where they don't have any, I'll just ask for hot water and then use the tea bag. I prefer to use their products, right? It, like, because we're sitting in the restaurant, but if they don't have it, then I will use that. So that helps with the drinks and with food. So I'll have all that food in the hotel room, not a lot of perishable foods, but just foods that I can use. So, but if you're at an all-inclusive, I found that there's usually a lot of things you can eat with well, the places I've gone. Years ago, going to Mexico, they would have all kinds of salads. You just have to be really careful because a lot of dressings will have um, sugar in it and chemicals and MSG. So, but there's a lot of fresh vegetables that you can load up and they, a lot of times they'll have different fish and grilled chicken and grilled meat. So there's usually tons of food that you can eat in all inclusives. But if you're in a hotel room, for myself, that's what I do. So if I'm with a group, like what I'll do for breakfast is I, I do like eggs. If you don't like eggs, you don't have to eat eggs. You can ask them to stir fry some vegetables and if there's some type of meat that you can have. Obviously bacon can have a little bit of sugar, but if there's nothing else, um, that's probably better than nothing, but you can probably find, you know, they'll probably do up a chicken breast for you or whatever. Be careful with sausages because they usually contain filler. But what I will do when I'm traveling is I'll have the greens. Sometimes they have arugula or spinach, et cetera. And they'll throw a couple of over easy eggs on top. And then they will send up a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. But if not, I've got my little bottle and salt and pepper and then have my herb tea, et cetera. And filtered water is way cheaper when you bring it in from a grocery store than if you get their little bottles, which is like a cup and it's like four or five dollars for a bottle. It's ridiculous. So that's what I do when I'm traveling in hotels. And then if I'm going to, to somebody's home, let's say a friend is inviting me for supper, or let's say I'm going to a, an event in town where it's like a group, a group of people. What I will do is I will eat before I go. And the nice thing is when you're on this eating plan, you can eat any time and you're not going to gain weight and you have to eat enough or you'll lose weight. So I will always eat before I go a meal so that I'm full. And then I will go and I'm sorry, that's not to a friend's house because a friend or my family, I will let them know what I can eat and what I can't eat. So please let the host know what you can eat and what you can't eat. And they're very accommodating. They will definitely want you to be healthy they don't want to make you sick so that is what I would do but if you're going to a social event where it's like in a community event and you're not sure what's going to be available a lot of times they'll have veggie platters so I'll just grab you know a, if 
if worst case scenario, I'll grab some water and I'll put some veggies on my platter plate and then I'll just go around and talk. Again, my focus is relationships. My focus is connecting with people, not in what I put in my mouth. I'm grateful to be alive. I'm grateful to be here to, to be here after 29 years of having this horrible disease, which should have, I probably would have been dead by now with how hard it was hitting me years and years ago. So shifting our mental focus on relationships and connecting with people. And if you're full, if you've eaten at home, you're not you're not sitting there like, oh my gosh, I'm so hungry, I'm so hungry. So that's what I do, is I eat before I go, eat the foods that I know I can have. If you're invited to a big meal, like what we're gonna do at our home, we're gonna have 30 people, everybody brings a dish, bring a dish that you can eat, but that tastes good. So I'll be giving you some ideas next week. And that's a great thing to do, bring a dish. And what you're gonna notice is that, and that's what's happened here, is that we influence other people they see you improving. They see you looking younger. They see you're happy and you're refreshed and you have energy. And normally that's not what happens as we get older. So when they see that and then they see what you're eating, they will be watching quietly. They will be watching. And over time, people are starting to make different choices. I've seen that in my family too. Many are starting to eat more and more the way that I eat because they feel better and it's just not worth the one second gratification on your tongue versus hours if not days of pain and agony later on right so that's the key and really customs are what we make they can be completely changed right you have to know that it's just because you grew up with you know pies and cookies and cakes and high carbs and tons of this and that that's really unhealthy. That doesn't mean that's the way it has to be. That means that's what you're used to, but you can make different choices, which taste delicious, which leave you satisfied, and which are life-giving instead of sucking you dry of your energy and your health. All right, so we've talked about traveling, and we've talked about going with family events and going to social events. I'm trying to think if there's anything else just really quickly. I think that I've covered most of it, but I'll go and see if you have any questions for me. There's 37 comments. Hopefully I can get to them all here or, or see them. So Sheila, I agree, MS is not fun. I hate it. I'm trying to eat better. So please, Sheila, if you haven't met me before, make sure to listen to my YouTube uh, videos and Facebook, Live Disease Free, that's our brand. I've got lots of, I, I share with you how I eat. It's, it is so huge and I did not, I don't have that here handy right now, but basically what I wanted to share with you, let me just see, I probably don't have it here. No, I don't. Okay, so just what I got, like we, we have a group that, um, the Wellness Champion Group, and they go through the academy and they're recovering from MS. We've had a lot of people recover. And when students start and they start to implement this eating plan and they implement really well, they have miraculous improvements. So the eating plan does not cure MS. It does not treat the infections that are causing multiple sclerosis. But when you eat this way, you are not feeding the infections as much that are making you sick. And when you don't feed them as much, you're kind of putting them a little bit on a fast. They're more quiet. They produce less poisons and less inflammation, and people start to have feeling back in their hands and in their feet. Their circulation comes back. They get up less often through the night. They're not getting up six times a night to go to the bathroom, maybe once, and that can be after a week or two. They have more energy. They're sleeping better through the night in general. They start having a better mood. There's so many improvements that can start happening when you're not binge feeding those bad infections. And what I want you to think about is if you are suffering with any type of disease symptoms, you're heading into the holidays and you ate a bunch of sugar and you feel terrible, you have to think to your head, I just fed the infections that are causing my symptoms and future disability, right? And that's the truth. That's the honest truth. That's why we react. And many of you know that. You know that you can't eat certain things. And that is why, because you're feeding the problem. It's not worth it. So make sure, and Sheila, if you're at that place where 
I don't know you, and there's quite a few people that are on this call that I've never met before. But if you're at that place, you're like, I want to be a wellness champion. How do you be a wellness champion? How do you do this? Like, I want to beat MS. I want 2019 back. I want my life back. I want to be hitting the new year running. Then make sure to watch my master class training where I tell you about what's causing your symptoms, a ton of case studies of people that have recovered, and then also the steps you need to do to, to heal, to recover, right? And you can recover. We do know what causes MS. We do know what causes disease. And thank you for all the love and the hearts. It means a lot to me. And those are probably the wellness champions that are sending all the love and hearts because they know what's true. And it is going to take work. If you haven't seen my work, make sure to look at what types of infections are associated with MS. We have tons of big worms. My students are passing tons of worms that are anywhere between six inches up to two feet long and many, many of them, passing them, feeling better and better and better. They have tiny little parasites that we can't see, but we're treating them, and their neurological symptoms are turning around. They have a lot of fungus, a lot of fungal overgrowth. There's different types of fungi, but they have a lot of fungal overgrowth, and as they're treating that, more and more symptoms improve. And yes, we can have Lyme disease, and what we're seeing is that we're attracting people that have been to really wonderful Lyme literate doctors, and they're just trying and trying to treat Lyme, putting them on antibiotics, and it doesn't work. Because the large parasitic worms are depositing their waste inside of us, and their waste contains Borrelia, which is Lyme disease, and lots of other bacteria, small parasites, fungus, and these parasites create this in toxic environment. They release things like lots of ammonia, amphetamines, morphine-type substances, but also their waste is like a breeding ground for further infection. So that's why we don't start with treating Lyme or start with treating fungus right off the bat. If you have a lot of symptoms of parasites, we start there but it changes people's lives. It gives them a whole new lease on life years later. I just saw one of our students on Facebook, saw a picture of her, she just had a puppy, and that's Melissa. I coached her years ago, and there she is standing, looks in great shape, and she's starting her own food company. So proud of her. So that is why I have so much to live for, and that is why a long time ago, I decided to take the shift off of food and put it towards like living my very best life and helping other people to do the same. So as I mentioned, Sheila, if you are ready, if you want to be a wellness champion, if you want to recover, watch my masterclass training, you can start, right? We just had three people start this week. Uh, really excited for them because this is going to be an exciting new year for them. So they've got a few weeks to get a lot of work done before Christmas. Hello, Mariana and Megs. Hello. Vision issues, again, caused by infections, all right? That is the biggest cause of your vision issues. And if you treat the infections, I can't promise full recovery. We have tons of people that get vision improvements. And one in particular, Graham from the UK, when he met me, he was at risk of losing his license. He was going in for an eye specialist appointment and because his specialist said, you can't drive anymore, your vision is so poor, and by going to work, he was able to keep his driver's license. He was able to keep that, which is, that's his independence. Really important. So you have to treat the infections, Megs. Hi, Judy. I am so grateful for you. I'm, she's a wellness champion. Um, Elvia, hello. What do you recommend for balance issues? Again, it's infection. And we're... The work that we're doing is so incredibly forward thinking and so wild. We don't know exactly which infections are causing the balance issues. We just know that if we knock back parasites, knock back fungus, knock back parasites, knock back fungus, we continue back and forth. But before we have to do some groundwork before, but as we do that, balance is restored. I see that all the time. So your balance can be restored. Uh, I can't promise you've got to implement 100%, but it very often is restored. It is a sign of the infections. It is a symptom of the infections. 
Right. And so Sheila, like we go off of all bread because the bread is ground up grains. You're not digesting them very well, but those infections in your gut are having a heyday. And a lot of the grains right now, they're like, especially the wheat, it's very high glycemic making, meaning that your blood sugar jumps up really high and it feeds the infections throughout the, your body and they're happy. You don't have to feed them three times a day. They're happy with once a day. And so they become stronger, they become more populated in your body, they produce more poisons, you have more inflammation, and you end up with more disability. So you can stop that, but you have to, first of all, recognize what the problem is and treat the infections, but we have to stop feeding them first. Elvia, hello. You like sleepy time, Sheila. That's awesome. Yeah, the probiotic, so it is called... Kavita, K-E-V-I-T-A. Again, I don't drink all of them because some of them have too much sugar. The only one I drink, it's only one gram of sugar in a large bottle. It's, it's probably like a cup and a half at least. And it has the good microbes in it. It's fizzy. But I mean, it's, they put a little bit of, uh, I think, stevie in it or something. But so it does taste a little bit sweet. I don't drink it every day, but I'm just saying if you want something festive. Another thing that's really great that I never mentioned, and I'll be talking more about this next week, is that there are some really nice drinks that you can get in grocery stores that just in cans that have the essence of berries, the essence of orange. So it's fizzy water. Of course, my, stand, my good old standby is buying Perrier or uh, San Pellegrino plain water and adding in fresh lemon or fresh lime juice that's a total classic that i love but you can buy you want to, if you want some variety you can get different cans that have no sugar they're not sweet at all but they have a nice essence of berry or or orange etc and there's actually a really nice tea that i'm going to try to find that uh, you just have to be careful with the christmas teas that you don't want anything that is sweet because if it's sweet on your tongue, usually it'll feed the infections. So Sheila, you always freeze your own blueberries and grapes as a snack. So the problem is that grapes are too much sugar for right now for the infections. It, it's a lot of sugar, a lot of food for them. And blueberries, we be, we're really careful. So you'll see when you watch my training videos, like for the fruit, we'll have a very small serving of fruit First thing in the morning, 30 minutes before a meal, no fruit throughout the day, and not a cup of blueberries. So that's a ton of sugar. Maybe a quarter cup of blueberries would be maximum. Hi, Darren. Hi, Antoinette. Hello, Pam. And Damon, hi. Okay, Damon, you want to sleep and get out of this wheelchair? You want to sleep and get out of this wheelchair in the new year. I can't promise that you're going to get out of the wheelchair. But I can tell you right now that there are two people in the class that are tarting, starting to take steps that have been in a wheelchair. One lady took 15 steps and another one, her, she's in a condo and her, uh, her elevator wasn't working and she was able to take a few steps up the steps, et cetera, which is awesome. And I can never promise that. So the exciting thing is that when you treat the infections, you will sleep like a baby. You'll sleep through the night. I just wanted to tell you too, um, Damon, that one thing that really helps our students, and I talk about it on other videos, is antihistamines. So as long as you can tolerate antihistamines, so I'm not, I don't know anything about you, so this is you do your own due diligence, but when we have a lot of parasites, they're very active at night. They wake us up, especially around three o'clock, and they can give us stomach pain and just wake us up, etc. So when the students take an antihistamine before bed, it could be just regular strength Benadryl, they find that they sleep better through the night. It's doping up or sedating the worms. And it's very effective. But again, most people tolerate it. You have to decide if you do. Listen to your body. And make sure that you're not taking anything that would... You can't check with your pharmacist and your doctor, etc. But it is something that's very helpful. We don't rely on it as a crutch. We're using it short term so that we can, you know, be treating the infections, but sleeping better while we're, you know, supporting the body, stop feeding them, treating the infections. And then as we're having more sleep, then we heal faster, right? So, you know, reach, watch my masterclass training, reach out to me, 
there is, you are going to have a lot of recovery. You can stop the progression. You can have a ton of recovery. Some people are coming out of wheelchairs. I can't make those promises, but if you have not, like, you know, this is where you just support your body and see how much recovery you can have. It's always more than people think. That's what I can tell you. Hello, Rob. Hi, Judy. And Janice, hello. I think that's it for the, I'll just see if there's any last. Bonnie, you agree to have a plan. Yes, start your plan and focus on what's most important. Remember, we want a meaningful holiday versus a perfect holiday. We want meaningful and we want to go through it and not be at the end of it completely devastated, wasted, tired, etc. Thank you, Fawn. Thank you for your kind words. All right, so I think that is it for the questions. I'll just thank you so much for posting. Thank you for all the love. As I mentioned, we're coming up to this beautiful season. This is one of my favorite times of the year. And next week, I'm going to be sharing about different tasty appetizers, drinks, and main dishes that you can have, basically a meal with a bunch of different dishes that you can use for your holiday season. And you can pick and choose and take some to events and family functions, etc. Then the last Facebook Live before Christmas, I'm going to be sharing some incredible highlights and successes of students throughout the year. Of It's been a wild ride this year. We've had, like, we're noticing that students can recover quicker because we really didn't understand how many big worms they had. And as they're treating them and they're coming out, they're going faster. They can treat the fungus better. It's easier to treat the Lyme, Borrelia, Babesia, the vector-borne bacterial infections, and people can recover faster. And I am so incredibly grateful for the insights. And you know why we have them? By the grace of God, but also because of these amazing wellness champions we're working with. They are the trailblazers. They are the leaders. They are the forward thinkers. They, I tell them to do something. It's like, this is what you should do. And they do it 150%. And then we learn from them. We're learning how to go faster and faster. So thanks to them, change is coming. And you can have change. You don't have to live like this. You don't have to suffer like this. I don't want you to suffer like this. Please listen to my masterclass training. If you're looking for a plan, if you're ready, join us. Join us. You can join us this week, next week, and you can start recovering and you can take your life back. And you have one life to live, so you want to make it the best. And we want this year coming up. I want you to be, I want you all to be on the ground running with me for January 1st, not sick and tired and overweight and financially wasted, etc. All right, that's a promise. So I'll see you next week with some tasty meal ideas for the holidays. Take care and bye-bye for now.